Celebrating the connection with our pets, this is Animal Radio, featuring your dream team, veterinarian Dr. Debbie White, dog trainer Alan Cable, groomer Joey Villani, communicator Joy Turner, and here are your hosts, Al Abrams and Judy Francis. Joey Villani still not here. Is that no, correct? Still stuck in, stuck in traffic? Yeah, he's not going to make it. Oh, Part boy. of me dies when I don't talk to him. I know. For more than that. I'm so sorry, big guy. You want a hug? Hey, here, I come over something. here. I'll give you a hug. I need something. You know who we have on the show today? This will cheer you up. We have Megan Blake, and she, you know, she's a fun pet gal. She does all kinds of fun stuff. She was an actress, I believe, she at was? one time, wasn't she? I forget yeah, what show. I don't show, think she's movies. acting anymore, but she was an actress, yes. She is going to be telling us about Air Hollywood, which is a sound studio in Hollywood where they film uh, usually airplane scenes, and they're actually taking them on the weekends and now training dogs to be calm on airplanes when they travel. It's yeah. really, really cool. So Test your dog. See how they're going to react. She's on the way. You know, stick around for that. Stacy. what are you working on? Well, I have a pretty stinky story coming up. Uh-oh. There's an Ohio woman who lives with 50 skunks. Yep. And she even sleeps with them. Oh, Maybe you can get her number. Gosh. I'll give you the details coming up on Animal Radio News. I imagine her social life is just hectic. <laughs> <laughs> social life? What social life? <laughs> <laughs> so what do you got going on happening at the office there this week, Doc? Oh, she had some interesting things, and Alan will appreciate this. This is, uh, you know, <laughs> behavioral craziness that happens in pets. And I had a dog that was in, uh, adoptive, uh, rescue, it had failed in a couple homes, and a good client of mine took it in. It's a Labrador that came into the exam room and actually started circling repeatedly chasing his tail and this went on for minutes minutes upon minutes and then finally he grabs his tail sits down panting exhausted and wouldn't let go of the tail so and what does that little, tell you yeah he he you know he's obsessive compulsive um really and it, it, yeah, and he was yes. really, any opportunity he had when he was nervous or anxious in the exam room, he would turn and spin and circle, and it was just really, at first, you know, you kind of laugh, but then after a while, it's very sad and tragic, because he really had no ability to cope, and this is what he has done and developed as a way to cope for his anxiety. Mm. You, you see well, how people mess dogs up? Well, I mean, some of that. Now, there are some dogs like uh, bull terriers. They're historically popular for this behavior. Tail chasing um, is a syndrome in the breed. Um, so we, we use a combination of behavioral training, and then uh, for some dogs, if it's severe, we will use um, behavior-modifying drugs. So um, we might go with something like an anti-anxiety class drug like uh, Prozac. Um, there are some dogs that actually this can be kind of almost like a seizure activity, so we'll use an anti-seizure medicine like phenobarbital. Um, but the big thing is, you know, like Alan always says, he says you don't want to kind of reward that anxiety and those behaviors by trying to recognize them when they're behaving this way. Um, so you want to find ways to occupy them, distract but, them. You know, it's so funny because most of the dogs that I've come across who do that, it's because their owners do not exercise them and tire them out, and they get frustrated. they got to get that energy mm-hmm. out, people. And Absolutely. if they don't have an outlet, they're going to start doing stuff that's destructive and weird. You know, they're either going to start chewing up your house or they're going to chase their tail or they're going to, you know, they're going to find some way to get that. And it's like being incarcerated. They need to get that energy out. And if you're a person who has a dog and goes to work all day and that thing is locked up all day and you don't come home and give him an outlet for all that energy he's got, well, he's got to get it out somehow. It's got to get out. So the medicines that you use for OCD, are they like the hu- the human medicines? Same. Yeah, actually very similar. So I, you know, I mentioned Prozac, and I do use that a lot with some of the obsessive compulsive or anxiety problems. Um, but there are other medicines that are clomipramine um, is one that we'll tend to use. Isn't uh, there another sickness, a uh, medical condition, where dogs will go in circles? Something to do with hearing or uh, their inner ear? Their inner ear. Yeah, no, that actually, I did have a doggy with that the other day and um, vestibular problems. So play, um, a situation where their inner ear or their sense of balance is disrupted. And there's a lot of causes for that. Um, the particular dog I had the other day was a senior pet. And at first we were suspicious she had what we call old dog vestibular syndrome, mm. um, which is actually a temporary condition. People, you know, their dogs have these episodes where they fall over, their head is tilted, their eyes are darting back and forth like a dog. 
And in many pa- patients, these uh, senior pets, this is a really transient problem. It goes away within about a day to a couple days. Um, and it's just kind of a weird phenomenon we see in these guys where their inner ear gets kind of whacked out. Um, unfortunately for my doggie from the other day, it was more than that. But, um, yeah, we were kind of concerned she might have had that. Interesting to learn. Hey, if you have a Yorkshire Terrier or a Shih Tzu or a Pug or a Mini Schnauzer, check out Dr. Debbie's books, How to Be Your Dog's Best Friend. We put links over at AnimalRadio.com. Great reading. An owner's manual for these fine breeds. Hey, Alan, how are you doing? Doing good. What's going on in your world? My dog, Daisy, my girlfriend's dog, Daisy, and my dog, Daisy, they have... She has a, like, a personal thing, like a A word, if you know what I'm meaning. Uh, couldn't quite hear that. I'm sorry. The dog has a P word, if you know what I'm meaning. Oh, okay. Yeah, she has her monthly cycle, or her, her twice a year cycle, I should say. Yeah. Is it only twice a year? Really? Yeah. I did not know that. Yeah, don't they get off easy, man? I don't know how that goes, Judy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's not fair. So your dog is um, having her heat cycle, um, yeah. And, and and what about that? What are you? I was your wondering, question? What, is that a good thing or a bad thing? Well, I mean, it's na- it's nature, um, and this is exactly what is meant to happen um, as far as in preparation for pregnancy. Now, for dogs, if she's a pet um, and you're not intending to breed her, um, the best thing that I actually recommend is to get her spayed, to have the surgical sterilization done so that not only so she doesn't have heat cycles, because it's more than just the bother, although you know I think many women <laughs> would, would agree that the, the surgery would be well worth it. Um, but as far as by having her spayed, we're also protecting her against a lot of other reproductive diseases. And one of the biggest ones is a condition called pyometra. And it's an infection that happens in the uterus, in, in the reproductive structures. And it's very serious. Um, it can be totally pre- be prevented by spaying. So it would be a very good measure for your dog to prevent that type of thing, as well as all those cancers that can happen um, in a, an intact female dog. Um, and, and that can be done, you know, surgery can be done while she's in heat. Some folks opt to wait till they're out of their cycle um, just to minimize complications. But either which way, I think that will be the, the best way we can ensure you don't have to deal with this and that we can keep her in top health. Huh? So time to get her spayed, okay? Uh, okay. Okay, there you go. Thanks, Alan, for your call. one 405 8405 toll free to the Animal Radio Dream Team. You're listening to Animal Radio. Call the Dream Team now at one 405 8405 It's Alan Cable. You know, pit bulls get a lot of real bad press, so it's nice to be able to tell you about a real pit bull that did an amazing thing. Saved a toddler's life. As you can see, like, he's a happy, healthy little boy. And that's because of Tater Tot, their rescued pit bull, who woke little Peyton's mom up in the middle of the night. He wasn't really coherent. They'd only had this dog for a few days. And he kept on whining and barking and running between the two of us, so I checked on him, and, like, he was, like... Barely breathing. Christy rushed her son to the emergency room. They found out his blood sugar was dangerously low, and nobody knows why. The doctor says the pit bull's keen sense of smell is what saved Peyton's life. Because for them, you know, what for us is, you know, barely a whiff of something gives them a huge picture of what's going on. Doggy heroes come in all sizes. I could have been one of those moms, like, sitting there telling people how I lost my son. This is Animal Radio. Animal Radio is brought to you by Natural Balance Pet Food, the finest food you can buy for the health of your pet. No matter which line of Natural Balance Pet Food you choose, you know it will truly be the food for a lifetime. Visit www.naturalbalance.net to learn more. Hi, I'm Dick Van Patten. And I'm Jimmy Van Patten. And we're here to talk to you about our new line of alpha grain-free dog and cat formulas. And we've been the leaders in grain-free nutrition with our LID formulas before grain-free became a trend. Our new grain-free alpha formulas combine multiple high-quality proteins at balanced levels with unique fruits and vegetables for vitamins and antioxidants. For more information on alpha and all of my dog and cat food formulas, visit naturalbalanceinc.com. Are you a woman over 40? Do you want to lose weight and body fat? Does it seem harder than ever to lose weight? Do you ever experience hot flashes or have trouble falling asleep? You're not alone, and it's not your fault. Stubborn weight gain, hot flashes, and sleeplessness are common symptoms of menopause. 
But here's some great news about two great products. Amberin can help you balance hormones and relieve your hot flashes, sleeplessness, irritability, and other symptoms of menopause. And you can finally lose weight. Yes, even that stubborn body fat with Amberin Weight Loss, a powerful new product that'll help you get the results you want. Call now and ask how you can receive a free sample of Amberin Weight Loss and start losing weight. Just call 1-800-338-4293. You can finally lose the weight and all those other awful menopause symptoms. But you must call now. Hurry, this is a limited time offer. To claim your complimentary free sample, call right now at 1-800-338-4293. That's 1-800-338-4293. Fido Friendly is the travel and lifestyle magazine for you and your dog. Each issue includes hotel and destination reviews, along with health and wellness topics, dog training tips, and the latest fashion trends. Pick up a copy at Barnes & Noble, Hastings, or go online to FidoFriendly.com and subscribe today. Fido Friendly is the only magazine dedicated to the travel and lifestyle of man's best friend and the one magazine your dog will thank you for. This portion of Animal Radio is brought to you by Stella and Chewy. I got to put that S on the end. Yes, Stella please. Chewy. Chewies. They now offer the new size of raw frozen dinners for your dog. The uh, little intro packs for four ninety nine, where Stella and Chewy's is sold. Try the Chewy's chicken dinner, the simply venison dinner, the super beef, and the duck duck goose. Oh, the phenomenal pheasant. They also have that. Too. All good stuff, and you can try it. See which one your pet likes, and then yeah, see which one's their favorite. Thanks for the intro pack, guys. Because you don't want to invest into a big bag of food if you don't know if your dog is going to like that flavor or not. Exactly. That was genius on their part. Stacy, what are you working on? So what do you think the best way is to control the pet population? Uh, how about a condom? In uh, San Francisco, they're doing it. Really? I'll tell you about it. <laughs> yeah, I want to see you put it on them. I'll give you all the details <laughs> coming up on Animal Radio News. I'll pass. What, what aren't they doing in San Francisco? I mean, let's start there. Let's head on over to Jennifer. Hey, Jennifer, how are you doing? Great. How are you? Splendid. Where are you calling from today? Um, Granger, Indiana. Granger, Indiana? Yeah. I've never been. How about you, Alan? You ever been there? I've been there. I've uh, been through Indiana. You've been through Indiana's, Indiana. Indiana's, yeah. I've been there. It's by uh, the University of Notre Dame. Oh, I yeah. know where that is. We're right there. Do you have a, a dog? I do. And are you dressing it up for Halloween? <laughs> um, we normally do. We we can uh, fool people that he's a police dog sometimes. Really? Oh. Is, is he a <laughs> yeah, dr- until, until they see his behavior and then they realize, oh, oh, they he's know. Not really trained. Yeah. yeah. Well, maybe we can help you with some of that behavior. Alan over here, he knows everything or proclaims to know everything. I don't or it's claim that. I, I, also, I never said that. Wait, what? What? Uh, what? Uh, Okay, what I meant to say is, Dr. Debbie, I have Dr. Debbie over here, and she knows everything. I'm sorry, Alan. There's a little confusion there. I know everything. <laughs> she can help you. What's up? He is a rescue. Um, I got him when he was a year old, and over time, you know, we noticed that he has severe anxiety issues, which a lot of shepherds, I think, have that. Um, and he's mortified of thunderstorms and yeah. trucks and, and stuff like fireworks, stuff like that. Um, mm-hmm. The vet actually prescribed us ace promazine for him, so whenever okay. it's going to storm or something, like the 4th of July, something like that, we will give him a dose of his medicine because he will shake um, and pant and try to sit, like, on top of us. He'll climb on the back of a sofa. He'll pace oh. around with, like, a toy in his mouth. Okay. And then just the past day or two, um, he started doing it randomly, like, as if he heard something or saw something. Um, and I have no idea what's going on, and there was nothing. You know, I let him um, show me around our house. Um, I tried to see what the source was. At, at, I don't know, and it would get worse, and it would last a couple of hours. And so mm-hmm. I'm just trying to figure out. I mean, it just started a day or two ago, and he did it again today. I literally got my toast and my coffee, and I was walking to the couch, and all of a sudden something triggered it, and he got so nervous. He's, like, trying to climb on my lap. He's trying to sit on the so- on the back of the sofa. He was panting. He was shaking. I just feel so bad. I don't want to drug him all the time. That can't be healthy no. for him. 
No. Yeah, well, and, and you, I think the one of the first things that that I wanted to mention is that um, it sounds like your doggy has you know, certainly n- not just noise phobias, that there's other generalized anxieties that he's having. Mm-hmm. Um, but, but there also, it can be some crossover, some medical problems that could also kind of manifest and, and kind of make his anxieties worse. So if I have a pet that's acting kind of peculiar um, like that out of the blue without any kind of known trigger, um, then I do want to make sure I do a good vet exam and that we talk mm-hmm. about things like uh, partial seizures because that can certainly be a way that pets can present with trembling, acting erratically when, when you can't really identify that something might be triggering it. Now, it could be that something is kind of beyond our senses, some other noises or some other vibrations, right. something he's picking up, which is totally possible. And if so, that falls into that whole kind of generalized anxiety category. Mm-hmm. So um, I'll let Alan focus on some of kind of the behavioral things but, but a couple points that I would want to mention is that ace promazine is kind of the catch-all veterinary sedative that's out there. And I admit, I use it a lot. But for a pet with anxiety, it is really not the best drug. And the reason is, is that ace promazine is truly a tranquilizer slash sedative. So it makes pets quieter. But if we have a pet who has anxiety, who has fears and they're reacting to that, we really need a drug that copes, helps them cope better and is more in that category. So I kind of equate it to, um, you know, someone being terrified and we're just sedating them and they're still sitting there. They're still feeling those emotions. They're just not able to react as much. To me, that sounds horrible and that sounds That's inhumane. Really yes, exactly. So for me, I would definitely say, you know, it sounds like your fella, if everything checks out good on physical, that I would be looking towards some behavioral therapy to kind of work along with some behavioral uh, steps in therapy that we can do because a lot of these guys if it's not just noise and fireworks it's it, it can escalate and there can be this really yep. like everything in their world frightens them and terrifies them so they do need drug therapy and in these pets i am not afraid to, to take that leap and to get them started on something and there's different ways we can go you know something like a doggy prozac um is very good in um in my hands with uh, accompanied with a, a therapy plan as far as behavior um but a lot of dogs i will use something in the valium fa- family the benzodiazepines so drugs like alprazolam i might use say there's going to be thunderstorm so there's going to be a firework display. That's going to be something I pull out and use in addition on those kind of really scary, terrifying times when we know there's going to be a lot of things in the threshold. But at other times, I'm going to have your pet on a once a day to twice a day um, behavior medication. And then we're going to work with the trainer and we're going to work with the behaviorist and we're going to try to yeah. do some steps to get things better in that. Now, some other non-training things that I will use for a pet with some anxiety problems are going to be those simple things like the thunder shirt. I do love those anti-anxiety wraps for helping as yet another tool to help calm a pet um, when they're really having these kind of um, irrational fears. Um, mm-hmm. That in, in that in dog pheromones, I, I use those. I don't hesitate to use them, but I do not use that as the sole therapy. So I think that's yeah. really important. Yeah. I got some we stuff, Deb. We have the Thunder shirt as well, and I do admit that it, it does make an impact, but it's definitely not a cure-all. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. I, got a, I got some ideas for this nice lady. Okay. Are you there, nice lady? I am. (laughs) So when your dog is freaked out, how do you feel? Well, you know, it's funny you mentioned that. I actually have um, CAD, um, chronic anxiety disorder myself, and um, I notice if I'm having a panic attack that he picks up my, like, rhythmic breathing, and then he'll start to panic. Him and I are a lot in tune. So when he starts to panic like that, I realize that, however, I'm feeling I need to kind of, like, calm myself down and relax and try to uh, and isn't that, comfort him isn't that and what's, focus on my breathing. Which you are such a smart... <laughs> You are such a smart woman, and, and I know it's t- I know it's tough for you. I mean, I have anxiety too. I understand that. And you know what's beautiful about dogs is that they force you to check yourself before you wreck yourself. Now, if everything mm-hmm. checks out medically with a vet, like Doctor Debbie said, there are mm-hmm. some things that you and your dog can help you uh, help each other to, to to cope with. And the first thing you have to remember and understand is is that your dog looks to you for leadership. It's it's a lot of pressure. But when a dog has a consistent, confident leader, it instantly mellows the dog out and gives the dog confidence over time. So you have a very insecure dog because you yourself are coping with some issues as well. So how can you help each other? So what you need to do is when you know a thunderstorm is coming, tell yourself, hey, 
I'm going to take my dog for a real fun walk in the thunderstorm. Try not to feed into his nervous energy. Try to tell yourself, hey, you know what? Thunderstorm can't hurt him. We can actually have a good time. And what you're going to do is you're going to dress up in a raincoat, and when the thunderstorm comes, you're going to go out and stand in it real calm. Check yourself. Make sure you're calm from the inside out. Take deep breaths. And then you're going to take a fun walk with your dog in the thunderstorm. And see, when you change an association, which takes time, with a dog from negative to positive, even fireworks, if you do something fun with your dog when something bad is happening that used to really freak him out, it's mm -hmm. going to change the association from fear to pleasure and teach him that, hey, there's nothing to be worried about. My leader, my human is not afraid. She's confident, and I can relax, and I can be with her, and nothing bad is going to happen to me. And then your dog starts to gain confidence. And when a dog starts to gain confidence, they start to calm down and relax, mellow out, and they start to enjoy their lives, and fear starts to, you know, to somewhat be eliminated. Your dog might always have some anxiety, but you can really eliminate a lot of it just by being calm yourself and doing fun things whenever you see a trigger write it down memorize it okay she's scared of fireworks she's scared of thunderstorms she's scared of the car so i'm going to make it pleasurable to get in the car and i'm going to take baby steps hey alan do you like any of the desensitization cds for thunderstorms and noises well i think there's no substitute for you being with your dog and doing it in in real time in other words it's the difference between reality and fantasy so my best advice is to always tire your dog out every day by playing and when you know a thunderstorm is coming because i had the same problem with my dog and i've helped lots of people with the same problem fear i mean one dog was afraid to walk over the walmart happy face you know <laughs> that i was we were teaching this dog he failed the program we were teaching him to be a guide dog and that's why he failed you know that that yellow little thing the walmart thing it's kind of scary i was a little scared of that little happy face too it's it freaked me out and how does it drop all those prices <laughs> you're listening to animal radio call the dream team now at 1-866-405-8405 for dogs, like people, arthritis is the most common health problem, and joints are stressed even more with increased activity in summer. FlexRx is a new way to safely and effectively treat canine joint health problems. All natural FlexRx doesn't mask symptoms like other products. It's clinically proven to restore healthy joint function. With FlexRx, your dogs can enjoy an improved quality of life they've earned and deserve. Flex RX is available at Pet Supplies Plus or visit ProLabsPets.com. What dog food is specifically designed to reduce the risk of cancer, settle digestive upsets, reduce scratching and shedding? Canine caviar. What dog food reduces red tear stains and hot spots? Canine caviar. What dog food has probiotics that reduce the chance of soft stools and have a higher calorie count for better nutrient absorption? Canine caviar. So what are you feeding your dog? If you didn't answer Canine Caviar, visit CanineCaviar.com today and get your pet started on a longer, healthier life. Don't complain about your cable bill going up and up and up. Do something about it. Grab a pencil and jot down this special number, 1-855-645-MY-TV. The more cable TV rates go up, the better digital satellite TV looks. Say goodbye to the cable guy and get more of your favorite channels in 100% digital quality for less money. Call 1-855-645. My TV. Sign up for packages starting as low as $19.99 and there's no equipment to buy. You get free HD TV upgrade, a free DVR upgrade, and free professional installation. You control what you watch when you watch it. Record your favorite shows, pause and rewind live TV, even skip the commercials. Watch local channels too. At just $19.99, what are you waiting for? Pull out your major credit or debit card. Call 1 855 645 My TV. 1 855 645 My TV. Say good. Bye to the cable guy. Cut costs and get more. 1 855 645 My TV. 1 855 645 My TV. This is an Animal Radio News Update brought to you by Doctors Foster and Smith Pet Supplies with thousands of quality products at low prices every day so you save on every order. Visit fosterandsmith.com. I'm Stacy Cohen for Animal Radio. Have you seen the ads for condoms for cats and dogs? 
PetCondoms.org, they've got an ad up. It claims to offer a special brand of protection dubbed Animal Instincts. But anybody who tries to purchase a pack of condoms, you kind of realize you're out of luck. As soon as you click on one of the links, there's this message that pops up and it tells people, come on, there's only one real fix, spay or neuter your pet. Pretty good, don't you think? The site's actually part of a campaign by San Francisco Society for the Prevention of Cruelty to Animals, and it directs people to their real website, sfspca.org. An Ohio woman, this is a stinky situation. She's trying to prove that skunks aren't the smelly little creatures that people may think they are. Deborah Cipriani has converted her home into the country's only rescue center for domestic skunks. She has 50 of them. They have free reign of her five-bedroom house. It's dubbed skunk haven and some of them even sleep in her bed i know you're wondering is she single cipriani says skunks really are beautiful animals she explains that she bought her first one in 2000 to help her cope with the death of her mother not sure what that connection is but she also hosts an annual animal lovers event known as skunk fest every september you don't have to shower before you go there in a twist on the classic Goldilocks story, there's a Russian couple that says a bear broke into their home and started to eat their food. The couple's house is in a remote Siberian city. It's being renovated. So they were spending their night, and of course, where everybody would spend their night, in the sauna. <laughs> I hope they turned it off. They're probably two pounds now. They woke up to several loud crashes coming from the house. When they looked out the window, they saw what was going on. There was a bear who had apparently decided to eat a pot of borscht, of course, it's from Russia, that they left out to cool. And it was just right. The couple told police they sat in the sauna. They helplessly watched as this animal feasted on the borscht. The cops eventually came. They fired a few shots into the air. They scared the bear away, but not before it finished all of the beet soup. No word on if they slept in their beds or tried on any clothes. I know the tried on any clothes wasn't part of the story, but hey, you never know. An Indiana dog's been awarded a medal for completing something many humans shy away from. Boogie the dog was awarded a medal for completing a half marathon. He met up with runners at the race starting line in Evansville, and he just kept going. When Boogie crossed the finish line, nobody knew who he belonged to. Police sent out an alert. Many people began posting about him on Facebook. It was only after his owner noticed he was missing and went looking for him at a local animal shelter. They found out Boogie's big accomplishment. Well, it's not clear if Boogie's planning on running any more marathons. Nice, though, to walk away with a medal, huh? I'm Stacy Cohen. Get more animal breaking news at AnimalRadio.com. This has been an Animal Radio News Update brought to you by Doctors Foster and Smith Pet Supplies. Visit FosterAndSmith.com for pet supplies selected by veterinarians with 100% satisfaction guaranteed. Doctors Foster and Smith, your trusted source for quality, affordable pet supplies. Veterinarian owned with veterinary expertise behind every product. Doctors Foster and Smith has thousands of name brand pet products, including pet medications, all with a 100% satisfaction guarantee. Low prices every day, so you save on every order with free shipping on orders $49 or more. Fast service delivered right to your door. Shop online at fosterandsmith.com because your pet's health and happiness come first. We've talked about Stella and Chewy's family of freeze-dried and frozen dinners for dogs. Now we're pleased to share two new exotic dinner additions, Simply Venison and Absolutely Rabbit. Both are made with 90% single-source protein and enhanced with organic fruits and vegetables. Each are fortified with vitamins, minerals, and probiotics to be 100% complete and balanced. Stella and Chewy's, the official food of Ladybug, Animal Radio Studio Stunt Dog. Only the good stuff. For more information, go to Stella and Chewy's. Are you a woman over 40? Do you want to lose weight and body fat? Does it seem harder than ever to lose weight? Do you ever experience hot flashes or have trouble falling asleep? You're not alone, and it's not your fault. Stubborn weight gain, hot flashes, and sleeplessness are common symptoms of menopause. But here's some great news about two great products. Amberin can help you balance hormones and relieve your hot flashes, sleeplessness, irritability, and other symptoms of menopause. And you can finally lose weight. Yes, even that stubborn body fat with Amberin Weight Loss, a powerful new product that will help you get the results you want. 
Call now and ask how you can receive a free sample of Amberin Weight Loss and start losing weight. Just call 1-800-338-4293. You can finally lose the weight and all those other awful menopause symptoms. But you must call now. Hurry, this is a limited time offer. To claim your complimentary free sample, call right now at 1-800-338-4293. That's 1-800-338-4293. Animal Radio, toll free 1-866-405-8405. The entire Dream Team here, Dr. Debbie, Dog Trainer Alan Cable, Joey Turner, uh, dog father Joey Volani stuck in traffic, and um, at least that's what he said. And yeah, I, but he's he sent pictures to prove it. Yeah, well, the pictures look like they were taken from an overpass. <laughs> so I I think n- number ten on the BS meter here. I, uh, I don't think he's I don't think he's stuck. In I traffic. think he's stuck in traffic. I believe. Okay. Why, why wouldn't he want to be here? I mean, you know, I you, know. You, uh, he loves you, Hal. He loves you. And today, especially because today we have Ladybug the Studio Stunt Dog dressed up in her Halloween costume, Isn't which is it cute. It is cute. It's a describe it for listeners since this is radio. Wrong. Yeah, it's a little it's a little stuffed disc jockey that wraps around her back, so she looks like she's a thoroughbred horse with a disc jockey on her back. Oh, like there's a little uh, a, a little, a guy, jockey. little jockey, not a disc jockey, not a disc jockey. No. Yeah, no, just a regular just jockey a on jockey. her back. Yes, on her back. That's a cute costume. I know. Not the worst I've seen. What's the worst that you've seen? Uh, I saw this woman at a radio station once trying to force her pug into a costume. It took her almost an hour to get him into it. He was a little pirate. I was so I felt I felt so bad for the dog. <laughs> what you don't dress Rudy up? Oh come on, come on, leave your poor dogs alone. Oh, well, I don't know. Ladybug likes well, it. Well, some dogs like it. Some dogs she like. She likes yeah. the attention. Joy, I got to ask you. You would know. Do these animals like being dressed up for Halloween? It's actually an individual thing. Ladybug mm. does love it. And I was at a pug convention thing that was for Halloween, and there was a woman that was absolutely adamant. Her dog had to have the little devil costume with the horns and everything, oh, and God. he kept shredding it off of him. He did not want to be a devil. He said to tell her he'd be an angel. But he didn't want to be a devil, and she said, "I don't care. He's going to be the devil because I think it's cute." Uh, would he be De Niro? Would he? Would he have been De Niro? You know, I didn't ask him, but maybe so. I, I have to know about Nike because I put a cape on Nike, our cat, and he loves it. He goes to the door when the kids come, and he runs around like he's a real superhero. Do, I think he loves it. Does he? Nike says, "Well, he has two thoughts about that." That's really a stupid thing to do to a cat. However, <laughs> if you're going to do it, you might as well join in and play the part. And he does very well. I have a muscle tee I can put on him, too. He can have a muscle t-shirt or cape, whatever he wants. You don't want to be one of Judy's pets. Yeah, I'm sorry, Alan. I'm just very jealous of Nike because he has two thoughts. Isn't that nice? <laughs> yes, I, I don't have one. I know, one at a time for me, at least. Hey, listen, I want to bring to the show Kim Campbell Thornton. Uh, she is, and it says right here on her bio, the personal assistant, mentor, activities director for one Cavalier King Charles Spaniel and one long-haired Chihuahua. And that's probably <laughs> one of the best biographies I've ever seen. <laughs> uh, welcome to the show, Kim. How are you doing? I'm good, thanks. Thanks for having me. So you got these animals. Are you dressing them up for Halloween? Um, I am not. Uh, I do have a photo of Harper in a pirate costume from when she was about six months old. She was part of a photo shoot. But I got her a little witch's hat, and she'll wear it for about two seconds, and then she shakes it off. Okay. So we don't really dress them up. You know, Halloween's yeah. kind of a weird time because uh, black cats at shelters, they're actually not adopted out, usually around yeah, the, the whole month of Octo- October. Mm-hmm. Well, actually, they're starting to, they used to think that people would adopt black cats um, around Halloween and, you know, sacrifice them or whatever in satanic rituals. Does that really, did and that really happen? It, no, they really come to think of that as an urban legend, and it's not really um, believed that much anymore. And so these okay. days, a lot of shelters are trying to turn that on, on its head, and they might have specials for black cats and really? dogs at Halloween. Yeah. What is the uh, whole thing behind the black cat crosses your path? It's bad luck. Apparently, that depends on where you grow up, because I've done a little research on this, and in Britain, it's um, a good thing if a black cat crosses your path and brings good luck. Um, If a bride and groom see a black cat on their wedding day, they're going to have a great marriage. Wow. So where does this mythology come from? I mean, who knows? 
because it's so old. You don't know why, though. Just, no, I don't. Just, yeah. Well, that's yeah, incomplete really research, woman. We knew some of the backstories to these superstitions. Yeah. You have to go back to work. <laughs> Maybe a black cat crossed somebody's path and they tripped over it and broke their leg. And that's then, you know, one person from. tells another. But, you know, these things are hundreds and sometimes thousands of years old. You've researched all of these. I see that you you researched I, the Buddhist one. I like this with the light-colored cat. Uh, if you have a light-colored cat. You will have money in your house. Money will flow in. What is what is the actual? Let's see. Let me I'm running out right now one. to get one. That was yeah. It was something about if it was a silver cat, you'd have silver come in, and if it was a gold colored cat, you'd have gold come in. Oh. I think that was it. What about? I was walking to the sushi joints, and I see a little cat there with its paw up. Mm-hmm. What does that mean? That's um, a good luck cat. Uh, tricolor cats are good luck in Japan. And um, the, they bring good fortune, so it's a, it's a good idea to have an image of one in your business. We should get one right here and put it in there. <laughs> yes, we I should. I have one in my office. We could use it right now. I put it right up here in the studio. This little paw. Well, this is all cool. Do you, you have a website? I don't. I'm very old fashioned. Yeah, you. you I see that you write for uh, I'm MSNB. I'm on Facebook. I'm on Twitter. And uh, you, my dog has a Facebook page. Your dog. Well, see, there you go. Your dog That's has a Facebook. You need. Now, what do you uh, what do you post on that Facebook, or what does your dog post on the Facebook page? Well, she talks about going to nose work class, and she talks about um, she likes to talk about food a lot. She's very interested in that. What's and nose she work tells class? What I cook for them for dinner, or that she didn't get fed enough, things like that. What's nose work class? Nose work is this really fun sport where the dog learns to um, find and identify scents. I love that. So mm. right now they're they're on the beginner scent, which is birch, smells like wintergreen, and they have passed what's called their odor recognition test. They did that a couple of weeks ago, and um, now they can start um, competing for titles in nose work. That is awesome. What a great way to stimulate your dog. That's it is awesome. so fun. We just went to class last night. It's about two hours. They're both doing it. They're both very, very good. So I'm very proud of my little nose work girls. That's awesome. <laughs> so what are you doing lately? Just hanging out? Um, I have just recently started writing the Pet Connection column with Dr. Marty Becker. Oh, we know of him. Monday, I think, will be uh, our first column together. I will look for it. What are you guys writing about? That uh, circle virus? This is terrible. It's gone out of my mind. <laughs> oh, no, I wrote about um, ticks, the increase in ticks. That's what I wrote about. Yuck, I hate those things. Dang those ticks. Well, Kim, yeah. it's been fun visiting with you today. Well, I enjoyed it. Thanks for having me. Take care of yourself. Bye-bye. Usually I would give out a website or something like that, but yeah. I... This is the first... Mm-hmm. Can I say, Judy, I apologize 100% right on on that. I love that nose work thing. That was Did you guys cute. hear? I have amazing dog news. Um, this is a bulletin, amazing dog news. Good. I could really use it after that 10 minutes of my life I'll never get back. I need the bulletin sounder. I need that. It, this is amazing dog Now, you know, people, people don't realize how amazing dogs are. And, and, you know, one of the worst types of cancer is ovarian cancer because usually by the time they find it, it's way too late. Uh, they will find a tumor when it's usually the size of an orange or a peach and they need to find it when it's the size of an aspirin so they are now training dogs because dogs have this amazing sense of smell to sniff out ovarian cancer in the very beginning stages it's becoming a very successful program and these dogs are very very accurate and uh, pretty soon they're going to be able to save lives because of canines they do do so much for us they do that's amazing dog news right there Good day, Animal Radio listeners. It's Vinny Penn, your party animal, coming at you. Uh, I wanted to t- uh, relay a little story to you, maybe get some some advice from you. I've got new neighbors next door, and there was like major construction going on in, in their yard. Um, I know this for a fact because my wife spent four hours in the afternoon just peeking through the curtains uh, and staring at what they're doing. Any upgrades to any house in the area, the wives are all like, huh? did you see the new steps? Three doors now? Those are beautiful. Beautiful stone. Did you see the new curtains across the street, three doors to the left? No, I, I don't see these these things, but the women do. God bless them. But this was major construction. Uh, come to find out they're putting in a koi pond in their yard. It was really beautiful, if you ask me. They had nice slate, and the water's going to be running. 
They're filling it with fish. And I spoke with the neighbor, uh, introduced myself and spoke with him. It looked beautiful. I love the sound of the running water. I love the sound of the fountain. And uh, the fish he described to me sounded beautiful. But when I la- it, it took me a while. It wasn't until later when it dawned on me, uh, why not just mail an invitation out to foxes? Uh, perhaps some ba- there's been some bear sightings in, in this particular part of Connecticut. Uh, why not just let every, uh, every animal in the area know that uh, you've got a happy hour buffet and uh, they can just cut right on through my yard to get to it? So I brought this up to um, a guy I know who's brother is big into fish. We, we have fish ourselves right now. The kids love the fish. It's going to break their heart when they look out the window and they basically see something we stumble upon on the Discovery Channel happening next door. And he said they actually had to put a netting over it to keep the animals from from feeding on the fish. Although, what's that going to do to a fox? And you're still just going to have a bunch of neurotic, colorful fish uh every night I, you think i, w- I want to take my kids over to the pond next door to say hey look at the nervous wreck fish yeah no they're not cold uh, it is this it's it's beautiful out now. they're trembling because they know tonight that fox is going to try to get to them again are these homemade ponds really a good idea Vinny Penn, party animal animal radio just asking questions You're listening to Animal Radio. If you missed any part of today's show, visit us at AnimalRadio.com or download the Animal Radio app for iPhone and Android. You had a couple of dogs this week that if they were obedience trained, they wouldn't have been visiting you, right? Oh, yeah. The the craziest thing is I had a dog that was running through an open front door, and uh, there was another guy walking a dog in the front, and it was a pit bull on a leash, and this little Uh poodle went darting out the door, didn't listen to its owner, and actually, you know, got pretty thrashed um, within just a few minutes with, by this pitbull who was minding his own oh, business. Yeah. You know, pitbulls get a rap. And, and, and this poor, you know, dog on both sides, neither deserved the situation. It was really sad that, you know, we didn't have that behavior training. We didn't have control of the dog so that we could avoid that. And, it, you know, it was $1,000 surgery for, I mean, we had this huge flap of skin I had to have sutured back onto the body. And, uh, you know, that that's definitely one. But we had another one where a dog ran away in the desert and was after a rabbit, Uh-oh. wouldn't listen. And actually, um, I, I still think <laughs> to this day that the rabbit led the dog in the vicinity of a cactus on purpose. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Smart. He's, gonna so, try to, he's, he's fighting for his life, the little bunny, you know. He's got to get away. The lesson that, I, that I'd have to say, and I'm sure Alan will back me up, is that you know behavior training and good leash manners, obedience, can save your pet's life, uh-huh, and yep. it will save you those emergency room visits. Radio. And if you just tuned in in just a few minutes, Stacy Cohen will share with us what is a McRib sandwich at McDonald's. Because we all know it. It's not I ribs. Love it. <laughs> <laughs> if you're a fan of the, uh, if you're what they call a McRibite, is that, uh, is that what they other? call them? If okay. you're a McRibite, turn off the radio now. I can suggest some other programming for you because you may not want to go back <laughs> after oh, this. No. All I'm saying there. Okay. I mean, really? Did you actually think they were ribs? No. People but... would choke on the bones. Anything you make into a shape, you know, has to be something kind of strange. But anyway, yeah. uh, let's uh, head to Lee. Lee, welcome to the show. Good afternoon. How are you guys today? Very good. Have you ever had a McRib sandwich? I have, and you know what? They're actually pretty good. Pretty good. If you know what they're made out of, you won't want to go back. Yep. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> you guys are all going to ruin it for me, man. Sometimes the ignorance is bliss. I, I, like I know. know nothing about that stuff. Okay. Well, I know you wanted to talk to your Dr. Debbie. What's going on? Yes, I actually have three questions regarding three different dogs. Oh, wow. My, okay. My first dog, my first concern is my golden retriever. She's five years old. She's had two operations on her ears so far. She keeps getting uh, uh, hematomas in her ears. Oh, okay. And they tell me... Keep her out of the water. That's she does what? Problem. She, keep her out of the water. Oh, okay. She swims me. a lot, huh? Well, she, uh, she does. She likes to go play in the water, but when she gets when she gets in the water, she gets water in her ears, and that's where the problem happens. Okay. What have you done for oh. the hematoma? 
what have I done? Mm-hmm. Well, like I said, she's had two operations to, you know, to have a, a tube put in there and have them drained. Okay, because there's the reason I ask is with these hematomas, which basically it, it's a big blood blister that forms in the flap of the ear between the skin and the cartilage. It, it can be treated a lot of different ways, and there's a lot of you ask ten different veterinarians how they like to treat it, your hematoma, and they'll get, give you each a different answer because there is really no right and wrong way. It's it's right. what you feel comfortable with. So some folks will drain them. Some people put little stents in. Um, some people do a surgery where we open it up and. We we do what call pie crusting sutures, um, and then there's even medical ways that we'll treat with injections of steroids or types of oral medication. So, phew! So if you tried it twice and it's still coming back, you know what I got to tell you is well, you've got a dog with skin disease there. Well, really, the the main thing I want to know right now, I've, right now I've got her under control. As long as I keep her out of the water, she does fine. My main my main problem right now is how do I keep water out of her ears? You know, can I? Do they have earmuffs or something I can put over her ears? Something yeah. so I can keep the water out. You know what? I don't think your goal is going to be to keep the water out of her ears because it's not that simple. Ear hematomas are really caused by skin disease and ear infections. Um, and because we're talking about a retriever, um, ear infections are often due to allergic skin disease or food allergies, things like that. So you can stuff her ears full of cotton and use an ear rinse that's a drying agent after she's in water. But I'm going to tell you, those efforts are probably not going to stop these hematomas from recurring. And I, I wish it would. Um, but it's probably not the reality. The, the things that I would really encourage you, and, and we kind of are talking a lot about skin today here. It's, you know, it, it's a it's a big topic because a, a lot of our pets have allergic skin disease, and that can manifest in ear infections. Um, things that cause them to shake their head and where they get these hematomas on there, um, as well as other types of skin scratching and itching. So for me, I would say let's try to get some allergic skin disease under control. Check your baby for thyroid disease if it's not already been done, because that can be a real cause of recurrent ear infections in many of these retrievers. And I would really say that's going to be the biggest thing that I can recommend for the, for this baby here. Okay, okay. All right, my other question is another dog I have. It's, uh, well... She was found on my doorstep one day, and I just kind of adopted her. Uh, the vet say that she's a chihuahua, but she doesn't look like anything like a chihuahua. She almost looks like part <laughs> wiener dog and part chihuahua, maybe. But okay. they say she's full blood chihuahua. She's long. She's, she's longer. Anyway, the question is: is when when my other golden retriever likes to lay down? I have two golden retrievers, by the way. When one of the other golden retrievers lays down on the ground, you know, just sitting out in the front yard or whatever. Chihuahua will, will, will get up on her back. She'll crawl up on the back real gently, and uh, she kind of like starts like humping her almost. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and she does this only to this dog, and the golden retriever just kind of lays there, and she acts like she loves it. You know, it's like she's scratching her back or rubbing her back or something. Well, God bless her, man. That's determination, I'm telling you. <laughs> but it's, it's a man. It's a, it's a female dog. <laughs> okay. My, so they're both female dogs? dogs? That You said they're both females? Yeah, they're all females. Okay. All right. Well, mounting and humping is also a sign of dominance. So it doesn't matter that your little baby's a tiny little chihuahua. Um, she's actually found a physical way to demonstrate that by humping. And uh, the reason your other dog is probably tolerant to that is she accepts that as a display of her subordinate position to the chihuahua. So um, I have that happen around my household where I have a 90-pound dog and, you know, a little uh, 12-pounder. And, uh, you know, there's some times where size really doesn't matter. It's the attitude behind the body. So <laughs> that's how that is. Okay, okay, so there's really nothing to do to stop it, just kind of let her enjoy herself. Yeah, and, and try not to think of it like a sexual thing. It, it really is, it's just kind of like, um, you know, she's just putting your other dog in its paces, just saying, hey, you know, I'm just telling you, I'm in charge here. Um, so, yeah, it's really not anything that she's uh, oversexed or anything like that. Okay, okay, <laughs> all right. Now, my other question is, I have a brand new Chihuahua Tika. Oh, okay. Uh, she's 11 weeks old. Uh, I've got... Uh, my, my daughter's got one, my wife's got one, and my other daughter have, has one. Anyway, when they all three play together, my daughters are trying to stop these dogs from growling when they play, the three pups. You know, they take a little just... squirt bottle and squirt them when they, when they start growling. Is this a way to stop them from growling? No. You know what? Part of, part of that is just they're having fun. They're having and... fun. 
yes, just like we're talking now, there may be a point where the growling can be a signal of things escalating. And that would be what I watch for. But just growling, you know, there are some dogs that are just, they sound like they're tearing each other up. But they're still playful. You know, you watch their ear and their tail posture. They're just having a good time. And they're just role playing. So the growling doesn't bother me at all. And uh, I tell your wife to put the squirt gun down and just just put the earplugs in herself. (laughs) (laughs) Okay. That was was what I wanted to know, and I appreciate it. All righty. Glad we could help. And and if you have a question, we're waiting for you here at Animal Radio. So give us a call, 1-866-405-8405. You're listening to Animal Radio. Call the Dream Team now at 1-866-405-8405. Hi, this is Betty White. All us animal lovers love Animal Radio. Please help every way you can to make life better for our animals. You're listening to Animal Radio. Call the Dream Team now at 1-866-405-8405. The late, great Jimi Hendrix would have really enjoyed being able to travel with his cats and dogs on airplanes. And, of course, back then, they really didn't have any kind of training like the lady we're going to talk to in just a few minutes. She trains dogs to go on airplanes. How awesome is that? Megan Blake will be joining us. Uh, Stacy, what do you got going on? Well, remember the good old days where if somebody was trying to escape out of a, a prison, they would send them a cake and you put a knife in it and boom, it's done. Well, I guess you can't bring food into a prison anymore, so... Now the latest thing is pigeons. I'll tell you how this pigeon tried to help. You know, pigeons are the only things in life that I was almost as smart as. <laughs> Boy, that controversy of the gray wolves is still going on. Uh, I've got the latest info coming up about that, or whether or not gray wolves really do endanger livestock, and if they need to be eradicated. I'll give you the details coming up on Animal Radio News. Thanks, Daisy. The whole dream team... Uh- well, almost the whole dream team is here. Dr. Debbie is here answering your vet medical questions. Dog trainer Alan Cable with your most vexing dog issues. Animal communicator Joey Turner. And usually dog father Joey Volani. But he's stuck in traffic. He's been stuck in the traffic, what, over an hour now? What's that? Joey's not going to make it. In time? Uh, he says he's been in, stuck for 30 minutes in traffic. Don't see relief. So. Well, I'm glad I don't live where he lives. I don't know. I don't T- know what that text means. us a picture of you in traffic. I want to see that picture. I don't believe he's stuck in traffic. You know what, dude? I do because where he lives, it's just it, it's ridiculous. You cannot drive a car there at any time. You could be stuck for two to five hours in traffic. I'm not. I'm not lying. It takes one accident and you're done. Backs up for twenty miles. I'm just saying he's been doing this what thirty eight years now. He's been on he's been time. Doing your show. He's thirty eight years. Show, but th- th- no, thir- thirty nine years. 39 years. Holy cow, man. He's been doing this show a long time, but yes. even longer than you. Really? <laughs> I've been doing a show longer than you. Well, he we was sitting around waiting for you to come by. No, I actually started the show, what, 39 years ago, but I only did it for goldfish. I just had some goldfish in the corner of the room, and <laughs> I would do the show. It was successful. It was. It huge. It was not really. Huge. Well, I'm dependable. I'm always here. I'm never stuck anywhere because I have no life and no friends. You have us. We're your friends. Hi, Wayne. Wayne's your friend. How you doing, Wayne? I'm doing good. I have a very contrarian uh, cockapoo that does not want to get trained. Wow. Wow. Well, maybe Alan can help you here. What, what... Maybe you don't want to be trained, Wayne. Maybe that's the real problem here. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, I've had big dogs all my life, like Labs and Great Dane, and I've never, ever had one that's been so stubborn as this little cockapoo. What makes you say that, Wayne? Uh, she was very difficult to get house trained, um, and I was home with her. I'm normally an over-the-road truck driver, but I was off on a shoulder injury when we first got her, and I was home for, the, like, the first four months, and it took that whole time to get her house trained. And then, you know, she stubbornly refused to learn how to come, even though I worked with her, like, using a, a piece of, like, fishing line on her collar to pull her when, you know, just gently when she doesn't want to come. Most of the time, sometimes she's found out that the other's a treat coming behind it when she does come, and then other times she just will stubbornly sit and look at you. Well, you know, Wayne, here's the thing. Every dog is different and yet the same because each Mm -hmm. breed has their different traits, different things that they were bred to do. But because each dog is different, us humans have to learn 
how to teach our dogs what we want. And sometimes you think your dog is being stubborn, but in reality, your dog doesn't know what you want. So the first thing you have to do before you try to teach your dog anything is tire that little boy out. you got to take him out. I don't know what he likes to do, if he likes to run around like a maniac or if he likes to go for walks because walks are the dogs love walks. They look forward to them. They relish walks. So you get him tired out. I mean, you get him to where he's running around for 40 minutes to where all he wants to do is pant and lay there. And then let him rest a little bit, and that's when you train your dog. That's when you teach your dog things when he's all tired out because he's going to be much more receptive to you and i like to play a little game to teach a dog to come what what i do is i just put him on a leash and i will teach the dog to stay you know by by you know rewarding him for sitting still which is easy to do when they're tired and then i'll just say come and give him a gentle tug and i'll do it over and over and over again you have to remember that a dog has a two-year-old brain it's never going to get any better than that most people will brag about how smart their dogs are. They're really not that smart. It's that simple. They learn through repetition and reward, repetition and reward. You do it over and over again. And then you take the leash off and you say, come, and you'll see. Your dog will come to you. It may take you a couple of days, a couple of weeks to get this done, buddy, but you've got to be patient and you've got to stop uh, describing your dog as stubborn. Your dog is not stubborn. Your dog is just not understanding what it is you want. Remember that. Okay, okay buddy. I will certainly uh, work on that. All right, pal. Good luck to you, buddy. And call back and let us know how it's going. I will. All right, thanks. There he goes. Wayne calling in at 1-866-405-8405 to talk to any one of the Dream Team. Could be Dr. Debbie, dog trainer Alan Cable, animal communicator Joey Turner, or Joey Volani stuck in traffic. Is that the deal? He's stuck in traffic. Is that why he's not here? That's what he's saying. You know, when you're famous like that, I mean, if people get wind of you, they look through the window and they see you, you know, there's going to be a commotion. Big crowd around him. Is Especially he, when he's driving in his, his Porsche. His Porsche. So. How does he get in that car? How does, how does he get in there? It takes a few people, actually, to help him in. Yeah, you should have seen him like a couple of years ago. Yeah, he wouldn't have fit he, in the car a couple of years ago, yeah. but he fits in there now. He, he's the only guy alive and he's the jaws of death to get in the car. <laughs> Uh, see what happens when you're not here, Joey? Oh, yeah. That's why I'm here every week. I don't want everybody talking behind my back. Hey, listen, this portion of Animal Radio is brought to you by FlexRx. Like people, as dogs get older, arthritis is the most common problem they face. And FlexRx doesn't just mask the symptoms of arthritis. It restores natural joint function. FlexRx, it's available at Pet Supplies Plus. Are you dressing uh, boss up? You know I am. You know what he's going to be this year? What's he going to What's be? he going to be? I decided he's going to be Dracula. Yes. You know, you know what you should you should dress him as a giant flea. Flea. A flea. flea. A dog dressed as a flea. You know that would be a great Halloween. Co- Alan, you're coming up with all these ideas. Yes. <laughs> yes. These are that's perfect for my costume. Great ideas. I don't know what you're doing here, man. <clears throat> wasting your time. Yeah, that's that's all I'm. We're wasting our time. Hey, Joy. <laughs> yes. Jo- yes. I'm trying to disavow my knowledge of you folks. But yeah. Yeah. He's embarrassed what, of us. What, is, embarrassed. what does Boss think of this costume? And it's really funny because Boss looked at me, then he looked at Dr. Debbie, and it's like, do I get to say for real? And I said, sure. For real? <laughs> <And a painter. laughs> Boss, I'm glad. Anything? Today I was thinking of you, Joy, because I had a dog come into the practice and um, was coming in for a dental cleaning. And we had seen this pet recently and told the mom, you know, in the course of a regular visit, you know, we really need to clean his teeth. And she said, yeah, yeah, okay, fine, whatever. She ran into a, what she said was a pet psychic. And the lady singled her out and said, your dog is worried about his teeth and you need to address it. Wow. And she came in almost in tears today, and we did the dental, and he had two infected loose teeth. Oh, wow. That's so cool. That you couldn't see with a dog awake, which I thought was very, very interesting. That's and you know what? Maybe story. you can come to my office and help kind of solidify some of the messages, especially if a dog has a you know bad tooth that hurts. You know, that would be helpful. I want to come to the office. I'm sorry, yeah, Alan. You can't. I'm going to. I want to go. Alan wants to bring his very large, unhappy um veterinarian dog. aggressive dog <laughs> I, I want to be a dog magician because they're so easy to fool they're actually pretty smart i've learned in the paper this morning this article dogs 
you can point, and usually they'll see, they'll understand what you mean by pointing. Yeah, they'll look at the direction this, where you're pointing. To. Can't do that with cats. Can't no. do that with ferrets. Cannot even do that with chimpanzees. Doesn't work on Johnny Depp either. It no, does not doesn't work. Yeah, on him. but what does it work on? How Other elephants? Elephants. It does work on yes. elephants. Elephants. You can point, and the elephants know exactly what you're talking wow. about. Elephants are smart. Yeah. Hey, it's Guy Fieri. And before the game, it's all about the tailgating. Burgers, sausage and peppers, onions, hot wings, you name it. But come game time, if you got yourself a whole bunch of heartburn, roll out the Rolaids. Don't let heartburn keep you from enjoying the things you love. Rolaids gets you back in the action fast. Its dual active formula neutralizes more acid than Tums. For indigestion and heartburn, get rapid relief with Rolaids. R-O-L-A-I-D-S? Now that's how you spell relief. Use as directed. Acid neutralization may not correlate with symptom relief. What dog food is specifically designed to reduce the risk of cancer, settle digestive upsets, reduce scratching and shedding? Canine caviar. What dog food reduces red tear stains and hot spots? Canine caviar. What dog food has probiotics that reduce the chance of soft stools and have a higher calorie count for better nutrient absorption? Canine caviar. So what are you feeding your dog? If you didn't answer Canine Caviar, visit CanineCaviar.com today and get your pet started on a longer, healthier life. This is a referral service. Calls will be routed to an independent referral insurance agency. Do you know the number one cause of bankruptcy? No, it's not losing your job or running up credit card debt. It's not even divorce. It's medical costs. If you and your family don't have health insurance, just one serious illness or accident could be financially devastating. But now there's good news, really good news. A health insurance hotline has been established to provide health insurance for all Americans, even uninsured Americans with pre-existing conditions. Now anyone can get health insurance even if you have a pre-existing medical condition. I repeat, now anyone can get health insurance coverage. Call now for a free no-obligation quote on affordable health plans available to you. Again, this is a free hotline for anyone, even if you have pre-existing conditions. Protect you and your family from sudden unexpected medical costs. Call the free health insurance hotline right now at 1-800-838-5562. That's 1-800-838-5562. Call 1-800-838-5562. Who let the dogs out? Who let the dogs out? Who let the dogs out? Toll free, 1-866-405-8405. I have issues. You still have issues? I have a lot. I thought they were resolved. No, no, I have more. I have tons. I mean, and, and, you know, I'm very upset. I, You know, I don't know if I can talk about this or not. I don't know if I should. You have to let me know. But I'm being hounded by the AARP. I'm, be, I'm being hounded by these people. These people will not leave me alone. It's like, you're old. Admit it. Get on with it. Join our organization and do it now. You know what, what I get? What do you get? I get specials for cremation. Here, Judy, here's a special. We'll give you a discount for cremation. So you have do a problem now. with AARP? Yeah, I've got some well, issues. You, you know what? I have a problem with the word senior. Is there anything more degrading? Is there any Come word on, more Alan. degrading than the word senior? I think it's awesome. Do you know what follows senior? Discount. Death. Senior Death. discount. Why? Because you're a senior. Because you're a senior. And That's you're about right. to die, so they're giving oh. you this Oh, discount. and I can get into these special places with these, these communities for 55 or over, so there's no more screaming kids oh, and people gee. blaring radio. It's degrading. It's a degrading it word. It is not. To it call is awesome. somebody a senior, it implies that they're feeble-minded no. and they're useless. No. You know, I seen- strive to reach my seniorhood. I'm proud to be a senior. Oh, my gosh. You know, seniors, are. that's the only word that is both good and bad. Because you're a senior in high school, it's great. You're a senior in life, not so good. No, I disagree. But, but the, the AARP, they won't leave me alone. I mean, they I, you look at the latest magazine. It's got Douglas, uh, Kevin What's-His-Face, De Niro, and Morgan Freeman on the cover, like, you know, trying to make it cool. cool like, it's cool yeah. to be an old guy, you know? I'm going to yeah. send my check. I'm going to join. I find that it's really the I best thing to do is just to give in to the AARP. I will never give in. I will never give in to the AARP. Leave me alone, AARP. Leave me alone. They will hound you relentlessly. They have been. I'm so incensed by their little organization. I can't stand them with their little pre-approvals. You've already been approved. You're approved. Here, here. this is for you. Take this. Do this. Get away from me. Yes. They have been. But Unless you get a you free foil pack thing to keep your sodas cold if you join now. And that's great if you're heading on down to the early bird dinner at uh, <laughs> Denny's. <laughs> And Buffet Planet. You can bring your own drinks and save money and keep them cold. And cups provided for your dentures. I have another bulletin. Did, did you see the poor guy that was declared dead and now he can't? The judge told him he can't yeah. be alive. 
Yeah, yeah. cuz he he took too long to come back it was to life. Statute of limitations. No, it was 3 think, years. It yeah. No no life for you. Is there anything more absurd than that? Does that not point out the absurdity of government? Oh, I we don't need that to point out the absurdity of government. Hey Cheryl, how are you doing? I'm doing great. How are you today? Good. I have Dr. Debbie here. What's going on? Hi. I have a toy poodle. She's eight years old. And when she gets really excited, she starts, like, coughing or whatever, choking, kind of a <laughs> kind of sound. And okay. lately, she's been doing it more and more. Like, when she gets excited, um, she'll just keep coughing and choking. And I don't know if something's wrong or if, as they get older, do they continue to do that. And sometimes mm-hmm. even at night, it's almost like she's snoring or something. She's like, mm-hmm. <clears throat> while she's sleeping. So okay. is something wrong or is that normal for toy poodles? Well, it kind of depends. There's um, there's a little distinction in the sound that we're going to have to see if we can make. And it's going to be a little challenging on radio because, you know, you can't see me and I can't see you. Um, now, this sound that she's doing, it, does it sound like she's about to cough up a hairball? Or yes, does it... actually, when she does it, she has to kind of like choke and like like she's dry heaving, you know, like okay. she's going to throw up, but nothing comes out. And then okay. she's okay for a few minutes, and then she gets excited again and starts doing it again. That's okay. how she stops doing it is after she does that like dry heave. Okay, because the, the questions I'd have is whether we're making a sound kind of like a... <laughs> Like we're trying to cough something up, or if we have more like what we call the reverse sneezing sound, which is really cool. It freaks a lot of people out, and I get many an emergency call about it. It's kind of more of a, a vibrational sound. It looks like an asthma attack, kind of like a... Yeah, like a creepy cough almost. How that the second thing I mentioned is not really a cough so much as it sounds like they're trying to blow something in through their nostrils or uh, so it's not really a cough. Cough is on the exhale. This other sound, reverse sneezing, is on the inhale. So it kind of looks like they're really stiff, sticking their neck out in their vibration, vi- uh, vibrational. Um, so it's not really a cough. After a reverse sneeze, there's not really a gag or any kind of retching. It just kind of happens and then they passes after a few minutes. So I guess I'm still not clear which situation your baby might be in, but I would say... She does that retching thing afterwards. She does. Okay. So I'm going to call your situation more of a kind of a cough with kind of a gag or a retch. So in that situation, in a toy breed dog, it it isn't unusual, but I'm not going to call it normal. Um, The difference is because um, there are some small breed dogs that have problems with their trachea, where they have kind of a weak spot in their trachea and it collapses, and it can easily lead to a coughing bout in these guys. Um, So that is a possibility. Now, the other things that we look at bronchitis, heart disease, are, are also very common in poodles. So um, my best re- recommendation and the best way that I can help figure that out is to get an x-ray um, to see if we've got concerns with heart size or with this collapsing trachea, which many times we'll see it on an x-ray, and it just looks like a straw flattened out. When they're sucking in air, it just collapses, and they really can't get a good breath of air, uh, and that causes a, a coughing response as well as other things with time. So that would be my first recommendation. Um, definitely before I would recommend, um, you know, any kind of medications. Um, although the other thing we'll talk about is weight. And if we have any problem with excessive weight, respiratory problems in general can benefit greatly if we get slimmed down into, into a good, healthy weight. Um, yeah, she's only like nine pounds, so she's not, I don't okay. think she's overweight. No, sounds like she's quite petite, and that's exactly how those little gals are supposed to be. Um, yeah. But yeah, I'd say for peace of mind, I would definitely, you know, call your veterinarian. I, I'd get a chest x-ray. That would be the simplest thing, and, um, you know, maybe nothing's going on. Maybe we need to see, see about treating some airway disease, and a collapsing trachea is, in many cases, not serious, but in some cases, it can lead to a very severe respiratory uh, emergency. So it's better to know your information ahead of time. Okay, just try to keep her calm until I get her in there then. Yeah, definitely. And, you know, if she's nice and pink, she's not showing any uh, problems, uh, you know, recovering after these episodes, then, um, you know, certainly uh, that kind of helps you gauge how fast you need to get into the vet. Um, But, yeah, I'd say as soon as possible, I I would uh, just recommend it for the peace of mind. Okay, I'll do that. I'll I'll make an appointment and get her in for a chest x-ray then. 
best wishes with you, Cheryl, and, and give your good baby a little pat on the head for us. Okay, this is Dr. I will. Thank Debbie. you so much. Okay, All right, bye-bye. thanks for your call. My mom. Oh, it tangled. It's such a crazy day. Uh, why such a crazy? You have issues too. What are your issues? Oh my gosh, I got. I am so tangled in my cords right now. I'm going to choke myself. Um, I've had the trifecta today. You no. know what the trifecta is? No, uh, no, no. What is? We talked about this before on air. The trifecta is when I get a dog that's so scared that it urinates, oh. defecates, and squirts its anal glands all over me. Yeah, I remember that. Oh. Yeah. Well, that's not a great only that thing for you. It's and that it was the like the second patient of the morning. And not only that, but I have this big laceration on my arm from his toenail. Oh. <laughs> he tried to escape. It's like, oh, well, don't you like thing. all those funky smells and everything? Oh, how? Not no. That. No. You know what? Nobody likes that all over their lap. Oh. Damn, damn, <laughs> damn! I got the best idea. Uh-oh. I got the best idea. What? Okay, it's called it's called vet smell. And, and what it is is like it, it's the scent of a vet's office in a bottle, and you send it to the dog's parents, the the patient, and ah. then you you open it up, and the dog gets to sniff it, and then you give him a treat. So way before he ever gets to the vet's office, he associates the smell of the vet's office with treats. I love that idea, and Alan, oh, that's awesome. And you wow. know what? Part of the reason is some of these dogs really have never been to the vet before, so they're not conditioned to it. So that would be great. That's a great idea. You could become a billionaire. Judy, Judy can you write that down? Yes. That changed the whole Shark Tank idea we were going to go yeah, on let's with. Get on let's there. get on there. Let's, let's all of us, you know, we should just all go on there with no idea of what we want to do and just waste their just time. Just wing it, you know? <laughs> just Yeah. And give out the website. <laughs> That's all you got to do these days with Shark Tank. I'm literally tingled. So, yeah, so, the anal gland part of it really excites me. <laughs> it's I so sick. Smell. I love you that You do? Smell. I oh. do. I well, do. there are different flavors. So I will say some dogs have less offensive mm-hmm. anal gland mm-hmm. smells than others. But, you know, this was a pretty offensive one. <laughs> oh, I just love it. Wow. Isn't that sick? It's sick. That is. That's my Halloween costume this year. I'm going to be an anal gland. <laughs> well, you won't have to go far. <laughs> What do you do? Just a little makeup over there? <laughs> I don't. I don't need much. <laughs> Dogs or cats, horse or emu, animals are people too. Just when you thought there couldn't be any more cell phones, how about a cell phone for your dog? PetCell, the first dog cell phone, will soon be on the market. PetCell is a small bone-shaped phone, I'm not kidding, that hangs on your dog's collar. It works like a regular cell phone with its own phone number. You call in an access code from your phone and you can talk to your dog. Lassie, come home now! The phone also has a sort of GPS tracking device that can alert you when your dog strays out of your yard. Now, there's talk of one for cats, too, but I'm thinking most cats would like a cell phone with voicemail so they can ignore you and come home whenever they feel like it. I'm Britt Savage for Animal Radio. Animals are people, too. Animal Radio. Don't you just hate paying for things you don't need? Well, I do. And that's why I'm here to tell you about PennyBackup.com. We all know about those big companies that allow us to back up our computer files to a safe place on the web, and and that's great. What makes me crazy is that they make me pay for gigabytes of storage that I don't need. PennyBackup.com is here to the rescue. Same features, same data protection, same services, but you pay only 8.9 cents per gigabyte used. That's less than a dime per gigabyte. Save money, lose nothing along the way. Go to PennyBackup.com. Shaquille O'Neal for Icy Hot. If you've got pain, you need the patch. The Icy Hot Patch. Powerful, targeted, fast-acting pain relief that stays put without the mess. Icy to dull the pain, hot to relax it away. In a variety of sizes, from back, shoulders, knees, even arthritis. So you're covered whenever and wherever you hurt. Stop pain right at the source with Icy Hot Patches. Pain's no match for the Icy Hot Patch. For temporary topical pain relief, use only as direct. This is a referral service. Calls will be routed to an independent referral insurance agency. Do you know the number one cause of bankruptcy? No, it's not losing your job or running up credit card debt. It's not even divorce. 
It's medical costs. If you and your family don't have health insurance, just one serious illness or accident could be financially devastating. But now there's good news, really good news. A health insurance hotline has been established to provide health insurance for all Americans, even uninsured Americans with pre-existing conditions. Now anyone can get health insurance even if you have a pre-existing medical condition. I repeat, now anyone can get health insurance coverage. Call now for a free no-obligation quote on affordable health plans available to you. Again, this is a free hotline for anyone, even if you have pre-existing conditions. Protect you and your family from sudden unexpected medical costs. Call the free health insurance hotline right now at 1-800-838-5562. That's 1-800-838-5562. Call 1-800-838-5562. This is an Animal Radio News Update brought to you by Doctors Foster and Smith Pet Supplies with thousands of quality products at low prices every day so you save on every order. Visit fosterandsmith.com. I'm Stacy Cohen for Animal Radio. A Northern California family cat's in the running for a National Pet Insurance Award. This cat racked up a $1,200 vet bill, and it was squashed in a garage door incident. Ariel the Carter family cat is now in the running for the most unusual claim of the year. This has been awarded by a veterinary pet insurance company. The two-year-old cat's going to receive a trophy treats and a $10,000 donation made in her honor to the Pet Emergency Center of Marin if she does win the public vote online. You could just go to veterinarypetinsurancecompany.com. You could check out all the animals that are up for the award. Four Washington state lawmakers are sending a letter to Washington's Department of Fish and Wildlife. The letter says the department shouldn't be joining federal wildlife officials who propose delisting the gray wolves as an endangered species. Don Barry at Defenders of Wildlife says delisting isn't warranted. What the Fish and Wildlife Service is proposing to do is to prematurely remove federal protection from uh, gray wolves, despite the fact that there are huge swaths of suitable habitat across the West where wolves have not had a chance yet to recolonize and to recover. State Senator Kevin Rankers leading the legislator's effort. Washington's Fish and Wildlife Director said the state's wolf management plans are adequate. The agencies and friends of the wolves continue arguing over whether gray wolves endanger livestock. Students at San Jose State University in Northern California, they're complaining that rats are controlling their life there. They're running all over campus. The rodents are often seen scurrying through classrooms and on school grounds that are near ongoing construction sites. Video of a rat that recently ran on stage during a guest speech, well, that one's gone viral. University officials say they're launching an investigation to see if there's a bigger rat problem and whether the scavengers actually pose a health or safety hazard. Eh, One rat's enough to me. That's a hazard. A man and a woman in Brazil are in police custody. They allegedly tried to smuggle a cell phone into a prison using what else? but a flying pigeon. According to Orange News, Crystal Lee Manza wanted to give the phone to her incarcerated boyfriend. So what did she do? She strapped it to the back of the bird, sent it flying over the prison wall. The pigeon did clear the 10-foot barrier, but then it fell to the ground in front of a guard on the other side. Officers immediately ran outside the prison. They found Manson, another man. Her accomplice had a second bird with a a package stuck to its wings that contained a battery and almost 200 bucks. Both suspects were arrested for attempting to smuggle items into a prison as well as animal cruelty. I'm Stacy Cohen. Get more animal breaking news at Animal Radio. Dot com. This has been an Animal Radio News Update brought to you by Doctors Foster and Smith Pet Supplies. Visit fosterandsmith.com for pet supplies selected by veterinarians with 100% satisfaction guaranteed. Doctors Foster and Smith, your trusted source for quality, affordable pet supplies. Veterinarian owned with veterinary expertise behind every product. Doctors Foster and Smith has thousands of name brand pet products, including pet medications, all with a 100% satisfaction guarantee. Low prices every day, so you save on every order with free shipping on orders $49 or more. Fast service delivered right to your door. Shop online at fosterandsmith.com because your pet's health and happiness come first. Psst, it's me, your bathroom medicine cabinet. I see you naked, know how often you floss, and watch you pluck unsightly hairs. I can keep a secret, but you need to know. Your kids have been taking your prescriptions to get high. I couldn't keep it quiet, because prescription drug abuse now causes more deaths than cocaine and heroin ODs combined. So please, mind your meds. For tips on safeguarding your meds, and your family, 
visit the partnership at drugfree.org. Wherever you are right now, right this moment, you've never been closer to saving a child. Every minute, malaria claims another life. But donating just $1 provides a life-saving test and treatment for one child in Africa. $1 given, one child saved. We have the tools to ensure no child dies from a mosquito bite. One dollar at a time, one child at a time. That's the power of one. Save a life now by donating a dollar at PO1.org. For dogs, like people, arthritis is the most common health problem, and joints are stressed even more with increased activity in summer. FlexRx is a new way to safely and effectively treat canine joint health problems. All natural FlexRx doesn't mask symptoms like other products. It's clinically proven to restore healthy joint function. With FlexRx, your dogs can enjoy an improved quality of life they've earned and deserve. FlexRx is available at Pet Supplies Plus or visit ProLabsPets.com. Radio celebrating our connection with our pets toll free 866 405 8405 nationwide. I want to welcome our 108th affiliate, actually, two of them WSCW in Charleston, West Virginia, and WPCN in Wausau. Is it Wausau, Wisconsin? <laughs> Wausau, yay. yeah, Wausau. Yes, now, aren't you a Wisconsin gal there? I mean, where, where no, I'm not, but I used to visit Wausau and up in that area and got family up there. Well, we welcome you to the Animal Radio Airwaves. And uh, if you're brand new, to my left, again, Dr. Debbie. To my right, dog trainer Alan Cable. We usually have dog father Joey Volani in here. He's stuck in traffic, and he has, in fact, texted me a picture of him stuck in traffic. So with you his believe ba- him now? I believe him now. Okay. It's not so much the number 10 on the BS meter. It's a lot less now. Okay. But, you know, I figured 39 years we've been doing this show. 40 years? 42 oh, years. 42 years. I thought it was 87. We're all seniors. 400. 400 <laughs> Let's years. not be ridiculous now, okay? <laughs> He's never shown up late because of traffic. So I, I don't know what that's about. But I wanted him to see Ladybug, the studio stunt dog, who's uh, in her Halloween costume today, which is a little jockey, like a horse jockey is on her back. Oh, Can you imagine? Very cute. Can it we post cute. that picture on the website? Yeah, well, let's put it up Facebook. there. In fact, send us your pictures, and you can see our pictures. Uh, i got to say that Boss usually looks great every year in the costume. Boss is not costumed today, but probably will be. You've tried it on, I assume, already. I mean, it's only Absolutely. a few days away. We did a whole like fashion show. We tried several options, and um, I actually Facebooked it, and, and we took the votes in. And yes, so he's going to be Dracula. You should dress boss as a boss. You know he was last year. Last year he was a New York boss. And if it was a yeah. New Jersey boss, it would have been Bruce Springsteen. But it completely well, two different bosses. Exactly. I don't. I don't know. I mean, he was wearing pinstripes and stuff, and he had a little hat. He looked quite dapper. Well, now a lot of people take their dogs trick or treating, and for some dogs it's good. Some dogs they get freaked out by the people in the costumes, and they just assume keep them at home. Yeah. Right? Well, and even keeping them home and keeping them in a quiet place away from that front door, because you know they can definitely, if they're not into people coming into their own domain, um, it could be very upsetting. They'll be very anxious, and it's actually a time when dogs will actually escape out the front door, jump fences, because they're kind of spooked from all the ghouls and goblins running around. So we don't want to have a pet get lost or turn up in the shelter. Absolutely. And, uh, you know, and especially all the, you know, the chocolate toxicities. Yep. But I see a lot of dogs, you know, people are getting more and more keen about chocolate and the dangers. But there are dogs that come in that need surgery to remove lollipop sticks and wrappers mm. and fake cobwebs, you name it. Um, oh, they wow. will eat it. Mm. Yeah, so you got to kind of look out at everything that's out there. The day after Halloween is one of those days that you have at the office that's pretty busy. I know uh, Thanksgiving, you have a lot of people come in because they're always getting into the uh, fatty turkey and all the bones and all the weird things. Please be careful with your animals this year. Hopefully they'll, like Ladybug, she'll go around trick-or-treating and she'll bark at every kid she sees in a costume. I want to take my dogs trick or treating this year, so I can just see what the experience is about. I don't have kids, so you know, I want to like go around my neighbors and say, "Hey, this is my four-legged kid." Oh, I want to. Weird. Yeah. You don't even you don't even take your dog out on Halloween, do you, Alan? Oh, I take my dog everywhere, dude. My dog goes everywhere, but not in costume. You no, do he costume. doesn't need a costume. He's beautiful the way he is, just like he is. Okay. Yeah, I want to welcome to the airwaves an old animal radio friend. Not not. An old, a young not animal, a young old animal radio friend, not a senior. Megan Blake, uh, she is now the program director of Air Hollywood Canine Flight School. 
What? Hi, everybody. I'm really, really happy to be here, and I love your radio show. Let me say that. You, you guys rock it for pets. We have a lot of fun. We have the best job. <laughs> I agree. So now what you're doing recently, I see that you're uh, working for Air Hollywood Canine Flight School. The whole thing is, is like an airplane fuselage that's used in movies. A simulator. But when it's... Yeah, it, it's actually even more than that. Um, Air Hollywood is a working Hollywood studio. Okay. Well, most of the... Um, Airplane scenes and airport scenes are shot for all of the really cool television and television series and films, like Lost, their crash airplane, that was from Air Hollywood, um, NCIS, all of their flight scenes. Wow. Bridesmaids, remember that funny scene in Bridesmaids that was just so funny? Well, all of oh, these yeah, that one. So we decided that it would be a really great idea since so many people are traveling with their pets now, their service animals and their cabin pets, to actually use the entire, the entire studio facility to help people come through and train with their animals to fly safely and comfortably so they know what to expect. And it's our first test class actually had 60 guide dogs for the blind puppies in training come through. 60 came through in one day, and we got four paws up from every one of them and two thumbs up from their humans. The uh, the simulator, it mimics takeoff and the turbulence and all of that? It does. It does. First of all, we take the people through... Um, the, the chaotic experience of simply being in the terminal, but then we go through boarding the plane and we enter the airplane that you're talking about, which actually is a simulator. So it, it experiences turbulence, it tilts up, tilts down. We have all the noises that mimic the airplane noise, the ambient sound, as well as all the announcements. So we're trying to desensitize the dogs and their people <laughs> to all the stress that can occur when you're traveling. Well, now, how did this idea come up? Did you just figure you had some downtime there at the studios when they weren't filming and maybe you could make use of it somehow? Well, Talat Captain is the founder and creator of Air Hollywood um, Studios, and he got a small dog, and while he was traveling, he noticed that um, the dogs were scared, the people were freaked out, how do you get through security, and he thought it would be a really, really great idea to help people, actually as a service, and um, Talat and I had been friends for years, I'm also an actor, and I had done a film with him years and years ago, and every time he would Google pet travel expert, um, my name kept coming up, because <laughs> I've traveled over 130,000 miles with my cat, Sweet Sweet, the travel kitty, so he brought me in, and, um, and we just thought together it would be a fabulous idea, so I developed the program. And, um, and that's how it came about. Is it a one-time class? And if so, how long is it? Yes, it's a seminar which lasts all day. There are two sessions. There's a morning session. That starts, we start at 10 and end at 3. And in the morning, we go through the entire airport experience, including the simulator, fuselage. And then we break for lunch. Then we go back through the entire thing again. So people and their animals get to practice it twice. So, of course, you know, we're, we're, all the puppies went through as flying colors, the guide dog for the blind puppies. And we're hoping all the animals will, but of course, if they don't, they're welcome to come back again. So the normal Joe can do this. But say that. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. There's so many people traveling with their pets now. So cabin pets, as you all know, they're the ones that sit in the little bags that go underneath the seat in front of you as you sit on the airplane. And just getting through security without an animal can be tricky, as we all know. Going through TSA now and going through with an animal makes it, oh my gosh, makes it a lot, lot, lot harder because you have to take your pet out of the bag, which a lot of people don't realize. They have to come out of the bag and be inspected. The bag has to go through. Then you also have to take out your computer, your shoes. So there's an order to do it that we make it very, very simple. We teach them how to hold the, their dogs, or if a cat comes through, how to hold the cat. And then with um, service animals in, or in training or service animals, it's a good, good experience for them as well. Mm. How much? It's $349 for the seminar for the day, and um, you can go to airhollywood.com and click on the Canine Flight School link right there, and you can find out all about it. We want people to sign up. We're really, really excited about our first session. The reason I like this so much is because I don't want to ever see dogs put into cargo when you're traveling with them. Uh, just another one this last week, you were telling me, Judy? Got lost. Got lost. Disappeared. Yeah. The, the airline lost the, uh, the animal. It was in San Francisco. One of the, the, one of the guys, the handlers, you know, out there on the plane, open the crate or something, and the dog got cut loose. Oh, that is so horrible. Yes, no, we we encourage people to absolutely not put their dog in the cargo. So that's our policy as well. We're right with you. Got to love it. Great stuff. Please stay in touch. Megan Blake, ladies and gentlemen, Air Hollywood Canine Flight School, and the website is airhollywood.com. We'll put links to everything you've heard on today's show over at animalradio.com. That's genius. This is Animal Radio, baby.
Vinny Penn, your party animal, coming at you, the party animal segment. I want to talk to you about a little something called dog sitting. A girlfriend of mine is in town. Uh, she gave me a new number to call her at. I said, oh, you're not staying with your folks? And she said, well, no, I'm dog sitting. I'm like, what do you mean dog sitting? Well, my friends went away. I'm staying in there. Well, you're house sitting then. I said to her, you're house sitting. And she's like, well, no, actually, I'm here for the dog. The dog is the priority. I'm like, so if the house is burning down, you run in, you save the dog, you don't run back in for anything else? The house is, a, the dog is the number one priority? Are you going back in maybe for, uh, you know, some documents, uh, some trophies, uh, you know, you know I, the house sitting, the, the people who live there, one of the guys is a doctor. Are you going in for any of his degrees on the walls or, any, or is it just the dog? She's like, Vinny. Stop ranting and raving. Stop, stop being the party animal. I'm sitting for the dog. And I said, well, why don't you just bring the dog to your house? Unacceptable by the owners. Dog needs to stay in its environment. And I'm like, well, what if that environment burns down as we just discussed? She's like, listen, I take the dog sitting very seriously. I said, are you being paid for the dog sitting? She's like, no, Vinny, they're friends. And herein came the best part. And I said, so all day long, you're just going to sit around and take care of this dog, take this dog for a while. She's like, well, I love the dog. And I'm like, well, of course, I get that. We're all dog lovers. She's like, yeah, I'm just going to swim in the pool. And that's when I really decided, folks, and for my girlfriend, Doreen, who's listening, you're not dog sitting. And no, you're not house sitting. But you are, my dear, pool sitting. Vinny Penn, Party Animal, on Animal Radio. It's Alan Kibble. You know I love dogs. They constantly make us look at ourselves. This is the best frisbee catching dog on four legs. She's awesome. And this is the best frisbee catching dog on three legs. <coughs> her name is Macy. Fell in love with her the minute I saw her. She was my perfect dog. She's the only freestyle frisbee catching dog on three legs. She had an accident, and that right front leg had to go. It was heartbreaking for me. She was my perfect dog, and I thought, oh my gosh, she's not going to be perfect anymore. Macy, the dog, doesn't think about being different than she was before. She has taught me so much. She's just taught me acceptance and humility. You know, she sets no limits on herself. Maybe Macy will never be the best frisbee catching dog in the world. No, she's not going to win. She's not going to place. But it's not about winning or placing. It's about the adventure of life. <laughs> That's one of the amazing things about dogs. Macy doesn't think about being different from other dogs. She just thinks about getting that Frisbee. Now, what are most people always doing? I always wonder what's going on in his head. Trying to figure out what's in their dog's head. Like when she runs out of the front door and just starts chasing after people. Dogs get really interested in people that are afraid of them. It brings out their prey instinct. They get excited and they want to chase you. Oh, and she doesn't hear me saying, come back, Roro, no. Oh, she hears hears you all right she thinks you're joining in and she doesn't respect you as her leader if something's more interesting than you are the dog's going to go for it unless the dog respects you and respect has to be earned by giving a dog boundaries limitations structure stuff like that or like when she eats my shoes you haven't taught her what she can't chew and what she can't here's what most people do you are so sweet tons of affection for a dog without having to make them earn it they're questions that have been around for as long as dog owners have gotten dogs and not educated themselves about dog behavior first why he might chew a bedpost or why he might eat your socks. The reasons behind these things, which I knew, wish I knew the answers to. You should know the answers to him because he thinks you're playing a game when you chase after him and because you haven't taught him what he can chew and what he can't. Get more tips at AnimalRadio.com. You're listening to Animal Radio. If you missed any part of today's show, visit us at AnimalRadio.com or download the Animal Radio app for iPhone and Android. Let's take another one for Dr. Debbie. We have Trey on the phone. Hey, Trey. Hi. I take it you were the third in the family, huh? What's that? Your name? <laughs> yes, Trey. He's making fun of you. That's not nice now. <laughs> I'm making fun of it. What's going on in your world? Oh, my! I have a cat. She's about two and a half years old, and she's been spayed. And I've caught her spraying inside of my house Ooh, several okay. times already. And I've talked to my vet about it, and he says... First, he told me that once they're spayed, that they won't do that. But I told him I've seen her do it. So mm -hmm. he told me it's because that um, there might be strays around, stray cats. Uh-huh. Are there? I, I know there's stray cats around because across the street from my house, there's an abandoned building, and there's a bunch of stray cats in there. Uh -huh. But I was wondering if there's something I could do or something I could buy to spray around that she won't she won't want to spray inside the house anymore. Okay. Now, my question is, does she go outside or is she an inside kitty? No, she's indoor-outdoor. 
She does go outside. Okay. Yes. Well, that opens up the whole opportunity of a world outside your doors. And if she does encounter, see, smell, or even smell the evidence of those other cats in her um, immediate environment, you know, that's a lot to overcome. So she's basically saying, hey, this is my house. This is my domain. And if those other kitties are anywhere in that vicinity, um, this is a reasonable thing for a cat to do. It's not reasonable for us, but it's reasonable in an explanation scenario. So um, the big thing is, you know, keeping the kitties away or keeping your cat indoor. I think that's probably one of the first things we talk about. Um, and if uh, keeping her indoor is a reasonable lifestyle adjustment and you and she can take to it, that might help considerably. Although we still have kitties that are inside that look out curtains, that look out doors and see kitties on their front porch. And they can really still have those same social stresses and continue to spray and mark inside the home. So you have to do other things as well to ensure that she's not catching wind or sight of them from outside. Okay. If you, if well, you're not I know hit- she loves being outside. I, I really feel bad locking her inside. Yeah. <laughs> Now, uh, if, if, if you're opposed to, you know, making her an inside kitty, you have to realize that you can't control that outside world. Um, you can try. And now, do the kitties actually, do you ever see them come up to your house or? Yes, I've actually, like, because we have, like, a little door, a little kitty, kitty door in the back that, that my cat can mm-hmm. come in and out. And I've actually caught them inside of my house before. Oh, like, no. If, if we're not home. Well, no wonder why she's and... pissed off, man. <laughs> <laughs> I don't blame her. Someone comes to my house and messes with my stuff. I'm going to get mad. Oh, yeah. (laughs) All right. Well, here's the challenge you have is that if these kitties have come over and not only have they come in your house, but say, you know, they found resources, they found what they like in your house and they want to explore it. As long as they have that opportunity, you're going to have a really big overwhelming problem on your hands. What we need to do is shut off the access of those cats to your home. And that might mean keeping your kitty indoors for a spell. It might mean relocating the cat uh, door entry. It might mean trying some of those really cool products, the cat doors that are activated, say, with uh, the magnetic cat collar, so that the cat door only opens when your kitty approaches it, not when just cat A, B, C, or D down the road comes uh, yeah, up I've to the Yeah, I've never even heard about those kind of doors that yeah. activated by the collar. Yeah, so your cat has to be one that you can keep a collar on, but they basically have, usually it's a magnet. Some I've seen some where they have like a microchip that, that kind of activates it. Um, but yeah, so basically, and this works for dogs as well. So they approach the door and it opens when they're in a certain proximity to the door, but when an, an offending animal, and even say like a wildlife um, comes around, it won't open. So that's a great strategy um, that you can try to kind of keep the both the best worlds for your kitty. Um, uh. The other thing is if we do have to kind of shut the house down to cat access for a period of time, um, and if you can tough it out with your kitty, um, then there are some other deterrents you can try. And uh, there's motion-activated sprinkler systems. Um, I believe one is called the scarecrow. So basically, any animal walks by this little motion-activated unit, which is attached to your um, sprinkler, and it goes off frightens that little critter, whatever it might be, in a kind of soft and kind way. And there's also that same kind of product that can be activated with puffs of air, with high compressed air. So um, you might want to do a little bit of internet searching for either the scarecrow or the garden ghost, which are those respective products. Um, There's oodles out there, though. So um, lots of those that can be of good value to keep those unwanted critters away and to allow your kitty to still enjoy that lifestyle that she enjoys. And... uh, I would also, also, if your, if your vet hasn't checked a urine sample on her, make sure we do check that, um, just to make sure she's not dealing with a double problem of any kind of, um, hiding infection there, um, okay. crystal problem, um, cause it, we wouldn't want to miss that and blame her for, for being a naughty girl for other reasons. Okay. So, so, so besides uh, that, you said the scarecrow and the garden ghost is what it's called? Mm-hmm, the yeah. And then, things? and then that motion activated collar. And I, I don't have any particular brands. Like I said, there's tons out there, but, um, it might mean tearing out that existing cat door and re- retrofitting it with one of these other products. But, uh, you know, I think you got a lot of good options there and things you can try. And, uh, you know, if you have to shut down the feeding center and keep those other cats away for a while, um, you know, then, you know, do your best and yeah, maybe out, just keep, keep her inside active. and just let her out. Because uh, there's a, my cat door is like in my laundry room, which is detached from the house. There's another door mm-hmm. that I could close there. And I can just keep them inside and, and just open the door and let them out whenever. 
Because I, I think maybe she's just spraying inside because she smells the other cats in there, like you said. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And so I've had I, cats if I could just keep where they come. Out, maybe then. Maybe that'll work. That would be the, the the biggest first step, yes. But there are cats that just kind of approach the front door where Kitty will be sitting on the comforts of their couch inside their house. They look out the window and they see a cat spraying on, say, the front porch or a wall near their house. That's enough social stress to freak your kitty out and say, I got to do the same. I got to mark my territory. So oh. it doesn't always have to be an indoor even scenario for that. Even screen. if they just see them from inside, okay. Oh, yeah. You got it. Boy. Kitties and territories, man, you know, they're, they're like those little samurai. You know, they're, they're, they'll do it out. Oh, yeah. so you got a couple ideas. Hope some of those work for you. Let us know. I'd love to know if, if we're able to, to make some headway and help you out in this department. So thank okay, you for well, your call. Well. well, there you go. That's all we have time for today. It went by pretty fast, even without Joey Volani. Is he still stuck in traffic? He's still in traffic. That poor guy. Oh, yeah. I feel sorry for him now. We're out. We're going to go play with our animals. Uh, you should get outside right now. Enjoy some, some of the beautiful sunshine where you are with your animals. Uh, be sure to download the Animal Radio app for iPhone and Android. Before you forget, do it right now. I'll wait. No, I, I won't wait for you. I, I, I know you'll do it. It's free, and you can ask your questions from the Animal Radio app. Have a great week. Bye-bye. Bye. I just sent a flock of pigeons out to have their way with Joey's car. This is Animal Radio Network.